In this six series of heritage programs, we are privileged to meet with Dr. Ernst von Lochnanyi, distinguished composer, conductor, and pianist. In this first of four programs, Edward Kalenyi, professor of music at Florida State University, and Colin Stern of the music department of the University of Pittsburgh discuss with the maestro his early days as a composer. That has a lot of quiet charm about it, doesn't it, Mr. Kalenyi? It certainly does. Uh, what is it, really? Dr. Uh, Dr. Nine? Yes, that is the, the shortest piece which I ever wrote. Shortest piece. And it's a piece from the winter It's a set of ten little baggages. Does it have a name? Oh, this piece? This particular piece. Yeah, that's, that's two Ada. Two Ada. Yeah, A, D, A. Oh, the pitch is A D A. A D A A D A. Uh, that goes through the whole piece. Aha! Uh -huh. And uh, is the uh, is the suite from which it's taken uh, descriptive of a particular people? Uh, yeah, no, that's not uh, descriptive for different people, but it's ded dedicated to different. To different places. people. Yes, I yes. see. Yeah. You know, uh, Mr. Kilani was talking with me just a while ago, and I heard that the uh, your second symphony had recently been premiered by Antal Dorati, hadn't Not it? In Minneapolis. In Minneapolis. Yes, and will be performed? Will be performed again next season, in November. I was wondering whether you could remember back to the first premiere of your... Yeah, first premiere. Yes. yes. <laughs> if I go back to the very first premiere, the very first premiere was when I was still a high school boy, and... Uh, wrote a piano quartet in F sharp minor, which was performed with me as a boy in Vienna by a quartet called Duesberg Quartet. It was in 1892. 1892. When, uh, when was your Opus 1 performed? What is your Opus, opus one, one? Opus One, which is uh, because this uh, quartet had no opus, like no many, opus all one. those things which I composed be before, I really, uh, really went into 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 earnestly uh, studied music. Uh, the opus One, which is it's the first piece which is published, was written in 1897 already. I was that time only student in, in the Royal Academy of Music in Budapest. Uh, it was performed in 1897, but it was composed and before... Composed? Oh, so at, uh, yeah, well, maybe I began it... No. It... Uh, I, I began it in 1896, and it oh, was finished. In, it was finished five days before the first performance. Oh. <laughs> 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 the old Manny technique. I, yeah, even I, I, I did that very often. Very often, yes. Was it, it was a piano quintet. Wasn't That's it? a piano quintet which Brahms has seen. Which Brahms? Brahms has seen. Ah, well, no, here, we, here we get to some yeah. things which I'm sure are going to be of tremendous interest. And heard, too. That was yeah, so because, of course, it heard. Heard, yes. Yeah, Brahms. Heard, too. Uh, that uh, my, my, my composition, uh, composition teacher, Hans Kessler, was a friend of Brahms. And... Uh, visited Brahms every year in Ischl, where Brahms used to spend his summer. And uh, he just mentioned my quintet and 
wrote to me that I should send a score with a parts to issue, which I did. And afterwards I heard that it was performed there in issue in the, in the apartment of Brown by Arthur Nikish, a very famous conductor, and which is perhaps for just for Americans very interesting, by the Kneisel Court. Oh, yes. From Boston. Did you ever hear of Brahms' comments? And uh, uh, so then, of course, what happened is uh, that Brahms arranged that uh, this was then publicly uh, performed in Vienna in the same year in November, on which could occasion with me, of course, and mm -hmm. uh, then I, I met Brahms several times. I was twice in his, his uh, apartment, and he was after the concert. Uh, in, uh, with, uh, in a company of a uh, few musicians, also Steinbach from Mainz, who was by chance there. And so I have very nice remembrance. Well, if I may just interject here, uh, Brahms, as you yourself had told me, uh, generally said unpleasant things to people and yeah, anything pleasant. But I understand that he said about this quintet, not to you. No, he that, didn't uh, say any unpleasant things to me, but neither <laughs> pleasant things. But I, no. I, understand <laughs> that he said, I understand that he said about this quintet that he himself couldn't have written it better. Uh, that I heard from somebody else. Well, there it is. I see. can't control it. You can't control it, and you wouldn't say it. <laughs> I know, but this has been heard. Yeah. But yes. there are some, there are some uh, amusing little anecdotes about how unpleasant Brahms could be, aren't there? Brahms? Yeah, oh yes, it could be. <laughs> and, and, and that's especially, you know, uh, it was very interesting when I was there with him and he uh, just said it's uh, very lucky that I'm studying in, in Budapest uh, because uh, there is nobody in Vienna. And now he began to and, <laughs> and, and uh, all, all the music began with Bruckner and, and, and Hans Richter and all the musicians in Vienna. He didn't see very, he <laughs> see very nice things about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now, but, but then he asked me whether I, uh, what I'm now writing, and I said, a symphony, and then he said, of course, in minor. And I said, no, it's a by chance in major. And that was, uh, the, my, in fact, my first symphony, but which is not published, and I don't, don't call it at all the first, because the first is, in fact, my, my, my which I call first, is my second one, in D minor. This is in minor B. And uh, which was performed now in, in, in uh, uh, Minneapolis, I call my second. Mm -hmm. In fact, it is the third, yeah. mm -hmm. if I count this one. Yeah. Uh, which won, the first one won a prize in a, in a competition. But never, I, I didn't intend to publish mm -hmm. yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your, your early life in Hungary, Dr. Daknanyi? Uh, where was the town of your birth? Yeah, I was, <coughs> I was born in, in Pozsony. Also in German, they called it uh, uh, Pressburg. And I'm sorry to say it's now Bratislava. It belongs to Czechoslovakia. But it's, a, it's an old coronation, it's an old coronation uh, town of, of, of uh, Hungary. And uh, it's very near to Vienna. It's only 70 kilometers, which means, I think, about 40 miles. Just about. And so, of course, uh, the people from uh, from Poison used to go very often to Vienna. And so, went my father also very often because it was very easy to get there. And was my recollections of my childhood are the, are just uh, the most beautiful a child can uh, could have. You know, I'm. I'm I'm brought up in chamber music because my father taught me. My father was a very fine amateur cellist, and he he didn't play piano. But uh, he, the first two years he taught me the piano when I was six years old. And with seven, I already began to compose and I composed a lot there. And we had chamber music every Sunday at home. And later on, I I played also little violin, and I had my own quartet in which I played the viola uh, and everything. And the, the, the musical life in that little town, which had 
Oh, well, that time when I was born, not more than 40 or 50,000 inhabitants. It was very, 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 very nice. Uh, and all the uh, famous artists who played in, in Vienna, they generally came down to give a recital in, in Poggioen too. So I, I heard in my childhood, in Rubinstein play, Bülow with his orchestra, Dalbert and many others, Joachim and Salazar, uh, uh, Wilhelmi, or the old, old, and, and uh, singers for like uh, Rosa Papier and uh, Alice Barbie, uh, etc. Et Didn't you at one time when you were a young man attend a concert at which Franz Liszt was playing? Yeah, that was a concert in which uh, I heard Anton Rubinstein. Yeah, not too. Yeah, Anton Rubinstein. In that concert was this, uh, uh, as, as just as, as listener there. And he was I an elderly him. man then, was he? Oh, of course, that uh -huh. because I was uh, at the war in 1884, mm -hmm. and two years before he died, in 1986, mm -hmm. and uh, I saw him. He was. Uh, partly standing, you know, and the whole audience could see him very mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all. Still a man of tremendous yeah, stature. Yeah, I, 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 that picture is still very, very, very live in my, my, my recollection. I wonder if we could interrupt your reminiscences for just a moment and, and listen to some of your music, Dr. Dachnani. Could we have some something at the piano? Yeah, so then we have to go. And then we can go <laughs> very few but, years. Yeah, yeah. So, then we can go back and pick up where we are. Uh, uh, yeah, as I knew you spoke now about uh, my uh, uh, first quintet, which mm -hmm. uh, now that was published as Opus, opus one. 1. Now I will play something which is published as Opus 2. It's four pieces, Opus 2, which were written in 1898. This is one of, one of the pieces? One of those pieces.
Mm, I get the impression as you play that the piano was your first love. My first love. <laughs> but your career has, <laughs> has been extraordinarily versatile, yeah. hasn't it? You've been conductor, a pianist, composer. No, oh, yeah, so conductor much later. Conductor yeah, later. Yeah. I guess it wasn't so much later, excuse me, but it wasn't oh, so, yeah. with your first symphony, was it? I uh, know, yes. I uh, you mean uh, the, real, the, first, the official first symphony? The official, official first symphony, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. yes. much later. Yeah. Much you later. Know, I this is in the, this composed in the 19th century. And 19th, and that was? My first appearance as conductor was in the 20th century. Yes. Well, please don't say it was a century later. Before time slips <laughs> away on us, I'm going to ask for an encore. Could you play something else for, for me? Uh, how about the capriccio, for instance? Uh, when the uh, or, uh, oh. if we get No, if we get to the uh, closer date, the F, oh, sharp, the F minor, sharp minor rhapsody. rhapsody. How about the F sharp minor rhapsody? F sharp minor rhapsody. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, of course, between that what I played and the F sharp minor rhapsody, that's a uh, good many years. Uh -huh. there is, uh, and a good many uh, um, uh, compositions to uh, piano, concerto, cello sonata, serenade, and think what it is.
Dr. Gartani, I, I'm sure I don't know where all our time has gone, but uh, I'm positive this isn't going to be our last meeting together. I, for one, I have enjoyed this uh, session where we've been able to talk with you about such a rich life as you've had with, with your contact with so many famous names. Oh, but yeah. perhaps more important, I've uh, enjoyed listening to this music of yours. Okay. I think Mr. Killen, you yes. will join me in saying thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Most you. of the Rhapsody is as beautiful as ever, and the thousands of students who have studied it have not spoiled it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say farewell then. Oh? Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> You have seen the first of four programs featuring the distinguished composer, conductor, and pianist, Dr. Ernst von Dochnanyi. In part two, Edward Kalenyi, professor of music at Florida State University, and Colin Stern of the music department of the University of Pittsburgh, will discuss with the maestro the period of composition in Vienna and Berlin. The Heritage Series is a production of WQED, Pittsburgh. And from the minds of those who enter in, this gift is given. And this, our heritage. This is National Educational Television.